Section 4 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Joseph, Part 1, from Genesis chapters 39 to 42, King James Version. Narrated by Lydia. Joseph, read by Michael C. Johnson. Potiphar's Wife, read by Christine G. Chief Butler, read by David Allen. Chief Baker, read by Beth Thomas. Jacob, read by Brad Philippone. Bumpus, read by Gwen O'Brien. Judah, read by E. Snow. Reuben, read by Michael Landu. Pharaoh, read by Dada Binroles. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person, and well favoured. And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house, and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me, and fled, and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her, until his lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, the hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me and it came to pass as i lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out and it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife which she spake unto him saying after this manner did thy servant to me and it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife which she spake unto him saying after this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled and Joseph's master took him in, and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph, and shewed him mercy, and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And it came to pass after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard, into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream both of them, each man his dream in one night each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, 
in my dream behold a vine was before me and in the vine were three branches and it was as though it budded and her blossom shot forth and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes and pharaoh's cup was in my hand and i took the grapes and pressed them into pharaoh's cup and i gave the cup into pharaoh's hand and joseph said unto him this is the interpretation of it the three branches are three days yet within three days shall pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place and thou shalt deliver pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler but think on me when it shall be well with thee and shew kindness i pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto pharaoh and bring me out of this house for indeed i was stolen away out of the land of the hebrews and here also i have done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good he said unto joseph i also was in my dream and behold i had three white baskets on my head and in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of bake-meats for pharaoh and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head and joseph answered and said this is the interpretation thereof the three baskets are three days yet within three days shall pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee and it came to pass the third day which was pharaoh's birthday that he made a feast unto all his servants and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again and he gave the cup into his pharaoh's hand but he hanged the chief baker as joseph had interpreted to them yet did not the chief butler remember joseph but forgot him and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river and behold there came up out of the river seven well-favoured kine and fat-fleshed and they fed in a meadow and behold seven other kine came up after them out of the river ill-favoured and lean-fleshed and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river and the ill-favoured and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favoured and fat kind so pharaoh awoke and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk rank and good and behold seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto pharaoh then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying ah i do remember my faults this day Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker, and we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream, and there was with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favoured, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favoured and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favoured kine did eat up the first seven fat kine. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favoured, as at the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, Seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shewed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favoured kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he sheweth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, 
and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities, and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, Zaphnath Paniah. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much, until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn, Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he, Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses, and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came unto Egypt to Joseph, for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all lands. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies. To see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are your brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and wives not. And Joseph said unto them, that is it that I speak unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother. And ye shall be kept in prison, that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you. Or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spies.
And he put them all together into ward three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so that your words may be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so, and they said to one another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul, when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear? Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them, and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn, and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the way. And thus did he unto them. And they laded their asses with the corn, and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God hath done unto us? And they came unto Jacob their father unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man, who is the lord of the land, spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. We find your brethren in with me, and take food for the fern of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me, and shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye should traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said unto them, me have ye bereaved of my children joseph is not and simeon is not and he will take benjamin away all these things are against me and reuben spake unto his father saying slay my two sons if i bring him not to thee deliver him into my hand and i will bring him to thee again and he said my son shall not go down with you for his brother is dead and he is left alone if mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go then shall ye bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to the grave. End of section 4 Section 5 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Joseph, Part 2, from Genesis chapters 43-45, to 45, King James Version narrated by lydia joseph read by michael c johnson jacob read by brad philippone brothers read by Bruno wine judah read by e snow reuben read by michael landu pharaoh read by dodo Pinrolli. steward read by gideon snow chapter forty three and the famine was sore in the land and it came to pass, when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except you rather be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down, and buy thee food. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? And they said, The man asked us straightway of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have ye enough a brother? And we told him and recounted the tenor of these words. Could we so know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said unto Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die both we and thou, and also our little ones. I will be shorty for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and 
and before thee, then let me bear the blame for ever. For except had we lingered, surely now we had returned the second time. And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels, and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hands, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand. Peradventure it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise, go again unto the man." and god almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and benjamin if i be bereaved of my children i am bereaved and the men took that present and they took double money in their hand and benjamin and rose up and went down to egypt and stood before joseph and when joseph saw benjamin with them he said to the ruler of his house bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon and the man did as joseph bade and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid, because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, Because of the mind that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us, and fall upon us, and take us for bondmen in our asses. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food, and it came to pass, when we came to the inn, that we owned our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, and money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand, and other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Peace be to you, fear not. Your God and the God of your fathers hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house, and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that he should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. And he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Set on bread. And they sat on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled at one another. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him, but Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. Chapter 44 and he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have you rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servants shall do according to this thing. Behold, the way which we found our sex mouths, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then shall we steal out of thy lords our silver or gold? With whomsoever of thy servants it should be found, both for them and die, and we also will be our lords bondmen. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and opened every man his sack. And he searched, and began at the eldest, and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. 
Then they rent their clothes, and laded every man his ass, and returned to the city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said unto him, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my lord's servants, both we, and he also, with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Then Judah came near unto him, and said, O my lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant. For thou art even as Pharaoh. My lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one. And his brother is dead, and he alone is left to his mother, and his father loveth him. And thou saidst unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And we said unto my lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. And thou saidst unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall not see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the word of my lord. And our father said, Go again, and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. And thy servant my father said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. And the one went out for me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up, and the lad's life shall come to pass, when he seeth the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servants shall bring down the grey hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became shorty for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father for ever. Now therefore, I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. Chapter 45 Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years, in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck, and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover he kissed all his brethren, and wept upon them. And after that his brethren talked with him. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well, and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, 
lade your beasts and go get you unto the land of canaan and take your father and your households and come unto me and i will give you the good of the land of egypt and ye shall eat the fat of the land now thou art commanded this do ye take you wagons out of the land of egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come also regard not your stuff for the good of all the land of egypt is yours and the children of israel did so and joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of pharaoh and gave them provision for the way to all of them he gave each man changes of raiment but to benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of raiment and to his father he sent after this manner ten asses laden with the good things of egypt and ten she asses laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way so he sent his brethren away and they departed and he said unto them see that ye fall not out by the way and they went up out of egypt and came into the land of canaan unto jacob their father and told him saying joseph is yet alive and he is governor over all the land of egypt and jacob's heart fainted for he believed them not and they told him all the words of joseph which he had said unto them and when he saw the wagons which joseph had sent to carry him the spirit of jacob their father revived and israel said it is enough joseph my son is yet alive i will go and see him before i die end of section five